here is where things get a little more complex, although not really. Now you can try pulling these out individually, but here's what I do. It is possible to get all of them at once. Start from the right, wait until this passes, and then clear all of them out, and move to the center block at the bottom section. Now you're gonna wait for all of them to get down here. And then move up. You can actually drop an ice pillar to make this easier, but I prefer to make things harder on myself. Yeah, you can drop an ice pillar back there and then just seal all of them in and not have to worry about any of them potentially leaking out later on. Ah, those blocks with the holes in them are a new challenge here. Basically what they do is, you can kick ice blocks across them, but you can't walk over them. So, these blocks will leapfrog over it and go to the next free section. So what we're going to have to do here is basically weave our way around these things, which, again, isn't too complex. This is basically like... I wouldn't say a tutorial level, it's just introducing you to a bunch of elements that they're going to start, like, grouping up on each other in the middle of the game. Alright, kick him, take him down, dream bag. Boom! I should also point out that I have three lives at this point, and that was with the one-up that I got from the previous level. You do not get a whole lot of extra lives in this game. It doesn't seem like it right now, because I'm breezing through these earlier ones. Excuse me. But, it gets much more complex later on, and you will die. Uh, probably a few sections into the next world. And if you run out of lives in this game, it's game over, yeah, but there are passwords to get you back to where you were. Now for this section, your main obstacle is that bomb thing that keeps respawning. But it's not too difficult to deal with. You can just time it so that you go in when uh, it's already exploded, and yeah, nothing too complex here. Ah, this one. This is basically the same premise as a level that we saw a couple stages ago, where you can just uh, kick these blocks down. Only the difference here is there's not a floating section of blocks that you can just kick one block to. You have to make the entire bridge to go around this section of obstacles. Section of obstacles? Did I... Whatever. <clears throat> Freeze that one just to make this a little easier. Move in, take the bonuses, kick him to death, and done. And uh, for those of you wondering about those white bars on the side of the screen, those weren't on my TV when I originally recorded this. I'm recording straight from the cartridge. Uh, that's just a byproduct of my screen capture method, so sorry. Ah, this is one that I kind of screwed up. Mostly because I was just trying to get through this as fast as possible to get as much, uh, as many levels as I could into one video. But what you're supposed to do here is clear a path to that dream bag, and you can do that by going around these things. I tried going through them at first, and all it really did was... Nothing. Yeah, that's what it did. <laughs> but this is more so just a waiting game than anything else, waiting for the noggles to get into the right position so that you can kick them and form a bridge. Now you're about to see where things go wrong, and it's actually not my fault. Or at least I'm gonna just claim that it wasn't my fault. Now you can see I'm forming the bridge over here, but remember how I mentioned before that enemies can move around items? I want you to watch very carefully what happens when I kick this last block into place. Spiky comes down, and boom, it moves the dream bag. Moves it diagonally to that one space where I can't get it. That's another thing you need to keep an eye on in this game. Remember that the enemies can move around the items, because if you don't, and your time's running low, you can kind of screw yourself over by doing that. Oh yeah, and enemies can kill each other, by the way. Alright, so just wait for this thing to get out of the way. And we can move on. 
And there we go. Onions? I'm guessing? My god, my diet really sucks when I can't recognize what vegetables are. Anyway. This one you can take multiple approaches to, but you're basically just going to be going to all four corners. You can freeze them up there, freeze them down here. I'd actually argue that this is easier than some of the previous stages we've had, which makes me question why it's the last one in this sequence. Kick them down here, get the one up. Fairly rudimentary stuff. Now what I'm actually going to do is freeze this one, and then freeze that one, and just leave it there, so that uh, no more noggles can spawn behind me and potentially sneak up on me. Alright, and those are tomatoes, I believe. And if I remember correctly, yeah, one of them's going to talk to me. Now basically what we need to do is uh, climb this vine which is going to sprout out of the water to reach the, the Gardenland Palace, which is in the clouds for some reason. And I love that too. It's basically saying... Uh, this monster is slightly annoying the princess. KILL IT! Now I want you to watch this and tell me it doesn't look like an acid trip. What the hell? Okay, the triangles and circles I can understand, but why is one of the eyes a plus sign? And how did they get this palace into the sky in the first place? Alright, we need our first boss, Coke. I do okay. Anyway, he freezes over the level, and this is basically what most of the bosses do. They huck stuff at you, and then they fly down like this. And for this one, you just need to hit it three times with bits of the ice blocks that it throws at you. Fairly simple introduction to boss fights. Eh. What you really want to do is spread these out a little so that you don't end up uh, forcing yourself forward against the boss. But nothing too complex for this one. And now we go and chat with the princess. And, uh, there's an interesting translation for this one. Princess Pumpa doesn't say that the Wizard King has frozen stuff over or kidnapped people. No, she says that the Wizard King has stolen the palaces. Stolen the palaces. I've heard less absurd stuff stolen from Carmen San Diego games than this. But next time on Keiko Cubicle, Fruitland. Insert gay joke here. Bye.